Hi all, my name is Haley Comet and welcome to my cosmic corner of the internet where we discuss all things astrology and today the astrology of Vanderpump Rules, taking it back to pop culture astrology. If you are new to my channel, this is a series I do where I analyze figures within pop culture to better understand them as individuals, as well as really to heighten our own astrological studies. Truly, this was very helpful in the beginning of my journey, just to begin to interact with the archetypes that these individuals embody. So is it the classiest show ever? It is not, but is an opportunity to better our astrological skills as well as our understanding of these individuals who we've seen grow up throughout the process of this show. Absolutely. So if you haven't watched the show Vanderpump Rules, which is on Bravo, this might not be the best video for you. But if you are someone like me who indulges in a little bit of reality television every so often and also has a penchant for astrology, uh, you've, you're in the right place. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> so I'm going to be taking us through the cast members of the most recent season. If you guys want me to analyze some of the OGs like Stassi, Jax, Brittany, please let me know. I'm happy to do more videos if there is an, is an interest for it. But do you know throughout the course of this video, I'll be focusing mostly on the main characters within season nine. So the season that is debuting right now at the time of filming this in October 2021. So let's dive in, shall we? And Please know if at any moment you learn something new about the characters, you learn something new about astrology, I would so appreciate a like, a subscription. Any of those little nudges are truly so helpful for me and my channel, and I am so appreciative. And without further ado, let's dive in. The Astrology of Vanderpump Rules cast members. So do know as I move through this, I do not have accurate birth times. So when we don't have birth times, we can't really pay attention to the houses or rising because we don't know it. And for some, such as Charlie, I don't have her birth year, but I did get super creepy and look at her LinkedIn and look at her graduation dates. And I've, I've ascertained what I think it could be, but that's just me being super creepy. So yes, take this with a grain of salt as I'm not these people's personal astrologer. This is just a learning opportunity and a learning example. So let's start with Tom Schwartz because are you kidding me with the quintessential Libra that he is? Tom Schwartz is a Libra sun, Libra moon, Libra Mercury, Libra Venus, and a Mars and Sagittarius. <laughs> That's a lot of Libra. And that just comes through. Like, I feel like he just coasts through his life through charm and charisma, which charm and charisma can be a weapon. Libra is a cardinal air sign. Cardinal, cardinal signs are about taking action. Air is through charisma and charm. So charisma and charm can be something that sort of gets you through life and it's almost like the bumbling vibe of, oh, I missed their certificate again and people are just like, oh, well, that's him. I see from him this desire for peace, which exemplifies the Libra energy, wanting everyone to get along and being willing to sort of sweep things under the rug because he doesn't necessarily want to go there. He was also born on a new moon. So new moon babies tend to have a lot of ideas. They can be very excitable, but when it comes to implementation, they can sort of lose their way eventually. It's all about the big picture, the blank slate, or having all of these ideas, but they're not always the best with implementation. Then with Mars and Sagittarius, this indicates someone who, you know, does value new experiences. And you'll hear from Katie's chart, which I'll do next. She also has a Sagittarius. So that's sort of something that unites the two. Another interesting thing I found about Tom Schwartz was that his North Node is moving into Cancer. And I know he gets a lot of flack in the show for being too passive and too, like, emotionally nurturing or caring about people's emotions too much. But with North Node Cancer, that's what he's here to sort of cultivate. With the South Node Capricorn, he's not meant to lead his business in a very sort of like strict or regimented way. With North Node Cancer, it's about leaning into the heart space, being able to sort of be the good cop to Sandoval's bad cop at times and sort of soften, which I feel like he is exemplifying. Although with all of that Libra, you know, Libra will tell you what you wanna hear. They wanna keep the peace. They want things to feel balanced. So that would be frustrating to be in a relationship with someone who has that much Libra because they might not be, want to dive and talk about the real problems in the relationship, wanna just keep things nice. And with the Mars in Sagittarius might have random angry out outbursts of all of that stuff that's sort of like holding on to right as well as the desire for freedom but since they both have that they likely give that to each other in a way okay so i need to be mindful about my language here because youtube does not appreciate certain words but i also want to highlight that that sagittarius mars is conjoining neptune mars in astrology is the planet at of advocacy and Neptune creates this en energy around confusion. So Mars conjunct Neptune person cannot be really sure what they want. But I also want to highlight that Mars is intimacy, if you catch my drift, 
And when Neptune is on the Mars, there can be some confusion there or a different approach to it, which I know they've sort of discussed on the show. Just wanted to highlight that. So Katie Maloney is a Capricorn sun and a Leo moon. And when I looked at her Leo moon, she just came out with a podcast or it wasn't just, it came out a while ago, but it's like, you're gonna love me. Is that not the most Leo moon thing you've ever heard? But her Capricorn nature really comes through because she definitely seems like she's got it together. Like she would build furniture in prior episodes. Like she just seems like she can handle Things. And she has a Venus in Sagittarius, a Mars in Aries. This is someone who doesn't necessarily like to feel reliant on people. And that's really something for her to cultivate as her North Node is also in Aries and her South Node's in Libra. And that falls right on Schwartz's moon. And this is nice because there's this homey feeling. You feel like you've known someone from past lives but it can also keep you stuck in South Node. And now if this is a new concept for you, I have a whole series on this where I take it both by house and then there's another series I do where I take it by sign and by house. So it's more, it's more nuanced to your chart. But with South Node, while it's something that comes naturally to us, it's what can sort of hold us back. And when we have our partner's planets on our self node, there can be certain elements of that relationship that sort of like lulls us into a fake sort of contentment. But Libra is wanting to, you know, keep the peace or wanting to be part of a partnership so much so that she would sacrifice what it is that she wants because with North Node Aries and the rest of her chart, she's really here to be a boss, to be able to handle it and go on her own and make sure that her relationship honors her own unique spirit and isn't suppressing it and that she's not staying in the relationship just for comfort. I'm not putting that on them. I've just noticed it a lot with South Node is that they can, especially with it being in Libra, it can be, you know, overindulging when it comes to comfort and how nice it can feel to be in a relationship at the expense of these individuals growth. Katie also has Sun Mercury, which especially in Capricorn, like this is someone who does have a certain level of authority. And I know in this season, she's been sort of talking about wanting to have more of a business role within the, the restaurant that her husband and Tom Sandoval are opening up. With Sun Mercury, they do tend to have a rather authoritative way about the way that they express themselves. However, Sun Mercury people can be very rigidly attached to their own opinion. Sun is ego, Mercury is word. So with the Sun Mercury, they can talk more than they listen and they can also feel like they know best and then that's that, especially with the Leo moon. I mean, she's got all the fire signs, so there is a desire to want to express herself and, and with Capricorn in the mix, like her way feels like the best way. And she is nearing her Jupiter return. It will be going on through 2022. So I just wonder if we're gonna be seeing her in the news a little bit more. Just with Jupiter returns, typically extra lucky year because I don't have an exact time of birth that I was able to verify. I don't know what house that would be where it is, but with Jupiter, it tends to bring some blessings. So look out for her in the media. Ariana is a Cancer Sun. She is a Virgo Moon. And I feel like the Virgo Moon really comes through in her own criticism you know of herself and i know she has been through relationships that also sort of gave that feeling to her but with a virgo moon moon is what makes us feel safe and virgo is trying to find perfection perfection in oneself perfection in one's reality so with the virgo moon they can be very very hard on themselves their internal world can be constantly criticizing themselves so for her to be in that relationship probably echoed some of the sentiments that she had already felt about herself, which can be very challenging. She has Sun conjunct Mars, though, by a wider orb, and her Mars isn't happy in the sign Cancer. Cancer, Mars is exalted in Cancer's opposite, which is Capricorn. So when someone has Mars in detriment, there can be a feeling of a lack of power and they can overcompensate at times in order to feel more powerful about themselves. They can internalize their anger. They can have explosions of their anger because they feel so disempowered that they feel like they have to lash out in order for their voice to be heard. But with Sun right on Mars, she could identify with her ability to be strong. And I feel like with this combination, especially with it in Cancer and then the Virgo moon, there might be like a really tough facade that she feels like she has to put on in order to protect herself because she feels powerless in some ways, which makes me a little sad. Like with Cancer, it's represented by a crab, right? So they sort of have this, this tough, shell to protect their more sensitive underbelly and with this combination it just feels like someone who always have to be on guard and always have to look out for themselves because other people won't necessarily do that for them mars was inherently uncomfortable was in its sign of detriment whereas venus is inherently comfortable it's in taurus so venus taurus tend to be you know gifted with 
with aesthetics. I love how they decorated their house. They tend to be good with cooking, good with obviously like drink making, things of the nature. Taurus is very attuned to the senses. Editing me here, forgive the uneven audio. I just wanted to add that Ariana has North Node conjunct Venus in Taurus. Now, wherever your North Node is placed is not an energy that is innately comfortable for you. It's what you are here to work on. And Ariana has been vocal in the show about her challenge in seeing herself as beautiful and valuable. And with North Node Venus, that's like her life assignment is to find her own beauty, to feel worthy, to find love, to feel worthy of love, and just enjoy nice things. To work hard, energy of Taurus, but be able to enjoy the fruits of her labor. And then with Tom Sandoval, it was very confusing because I always thought he was an Aquarius moon. That's what was put out there. But when I did research, it seems he's a Gemini moon, which is confusing to me. I'll continue to look at this and see if I can find more. Not that I can't see that it's Gemini moon because he certainly has the gift of the gab. It really pairs well with, you know, Schwartz's Libra energy. Both these signs tend to be very, very charismatic. Gift of the gab so on and so forth. So it's, I'm not doubting that. I just always had in my head that it was an Aquarius moon. So I just wonder where that came from, but I found his birth date myself. I ran it and he's a Gemini moon. So he, like Ariana, has a Cancer sun, a Cancer Mercury, Cancer Mars. That's a lot of similar energies. I think same sign relationships. I'm in one personally and it's two Pisces. You could just imagine how emotional that is. Can you imagine two Cancers? It's a lot of emotions, but it is helpful because there's this feeling of getting one another, of knowing one another, of knowing how to make one another feel safe, feel comforted. So I like that, but I'm sure there's a lot of emotions. Cancers tend to be very, very responsive. So having to constantly respond to one another's emotions as well as their emotions, it seems a little exhausting. And the other downside of Mars and Cancer is that it can be very passive aggressive. So with both these individuals, there can be a passive aggressive nature at times. But anyways, his sun conjunction, which if you have a plan on your sun, you're typically known for that. You sort of embody it a little bit more in the external world. His is on Mercury. So Mercury's are known for their, their words, their communication abilities. And it's interesting that he clashes so much with Katie because they both have sun Mercury. And the downside of sun Mercury is that they can be obsessed with their own opinion, think their opinion is the best way. They can be very egoic around their opinion or their take on things. And they can also tend to talk more than they listen. So I wonder if that's one of the reasons why they clash, especially since it happens in opposite signs. Katie's the Capricorn, Tom's the Cancer. Interesting. And then Tom Sandoval does have a Venus Leo, of course. I mean, his outfits are always so flashy. He's so particular. Remember like season one when he would like shave his forehead? So Leo is the energy around self-expression with Venus and Leo. These individuals tend to go above and beyond when it comes to expressing themselves. Like nothing is too extra. Like they want life to feel extra over the top. They want to roll up, you know, in the motorcycle matching with their business partner. They want to shave their forehead. They want to look over the top at all times. They also need a lot of attention and energy within a partnership. They want a Venus Leo wants to fill in the center of their partner's galaxy, which Ariana, since she doesn't have any fire in her inner planets, that's probably nice to have a partner who has some fire because it can make her feel more confident about herself. It can be sort of a purifying energy and the v their Venus signs aren't inherently compatible, but what Venus and Taurus, that's Ariana, and Venus and Leo, that's Tom, have in common is a desire for things to be bougie, over the top, sensual, so there is a connection there. If he is a Gemini moon, it's conjunct Chiron, which is interesting. So a Gemini moon has a constant desire to want to communicate, they're constantly thinking of new ideas, they tend to be very, very intellectual, and with the conjunction to Chiron, there can be a feeling of not getting what one's needs emotionally. They can feel like the odd one out and they can also be very, very empathetic. He's also a balsamic moon individual. So there could be a feeling when you are a balsamic moon or a waning crescent moon, this is the moon phase he was born during, of feeling different than other people, of feeling a little bit like removed, even though Gemini moon wants to feel connected and, and share the message with a moon Chiron individuals, they can just feel a little bit different or the odd one out at times are a little bit more sensitive. So let's talk about Sheena, 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 Sheena. So Sheena, has her son in Taurus 
and her north node conjoins her sun. This is someone who was obsessed with being famous. I mean, her chart indicates that. When you have sun north node, your egoic needs can feel bottomless. You need attention, you need people to acknowledge your glow. And oftentimes they get it because where north node is, yes, it's our mission, but it also can create this energy of obsession. So when you have sun on the north node, there is an obsession with being known. She's a Sagittarius moon, which describes her desire for, you know, it's when you have a Sagittarius moon, it tends to be very, very uplifting. They tend to like new experiences. It tends to be sort of fun energy, like particularly in the earlier seasons, Sheena just amazed me with like, people would make fun of her, but she still was always trying to have a good time. She has Mercury and Venus in Aries, which does like a decent amount decent amount of a challenge, which is why we've seen over the years, you know, her pining over people who aren't that interested in interest in her always with the Venus Aries. They do like the energy of the conquest, right? So they often won't read signs that the person isn't into them because they, they think of that as keep going. Like with Venus and Aries, if someone comes on to them too soon, they can be like, oh, I'm over this because it needs to be a game. It needs to be a challenge. The other nice things about Venus and Aries and another thing I just want to call out about Sheena is that there is this really like childlike fun energy to her. Like with the Aries, she just wants to have fun in her relationship. She likes the energy of being obsessed with the person in her relationship. She also has her Mars in Gemini, which is interesting as Brock is a Gemini and Mars is what we find attractive in the masculine within our chart. So that's fascinating. She does have Chiron on her Mars, which can indicate some sort of wound in regards to the masculine. So it could be a wound in regards to her masculine energy, not feeling safe to go after what she wants or a wound in regards to just men in her life in some way and she's another one to watch as she's going through her nodal return in the upcoming year so the eclipses the eclipses will be on her sun as well as her as well as her north node will return to where it was when she was born james is an aquarius sun conjunct saturn so saturn is restriction saturn is limitations it's also pressure and what's fascinating astrology is that sun is our experience and not how our father was, but how we perceived them. And when someone has son Saturn, there either was a father figure who put a lot of pressure on them as a young child or put a lot of pressure around, okay, that's not what I want to be. So I need to, you know, be someone who is upstanding all the energy of Saturn. It also does create restriction and especially in a Saturn ruled sign of Aquarius, He's been going through Saturn return, getting sober during a Saturn return. That's very Saturnian influence. Like with a sun Saturn person, they need to sort of become a, an adult earlier in life. Like they have a lot of responsibility on them. You know, he's been helping out his family, things of the nature. And sun Saturn doesn't really allow people to be, you know, doesn't really allow chart holders to be really like willy nilly or like carefree with things. It kind of makes you be responsible. So I wish him the best for his sobriety. His chart just in definitely indicates that that's something that's important for his life's journey. Sun is, you know, our hero's journey, our ego, our identity. And with Sun Saturn, this is someone who's gonna have to sort of work hard, live a little bit more of a reserved, methodical life. He has a major Capricorn stellium within his chart and Capricorn influences are very hard on themselves. Yes, they can be very lusty in astrology, Capricorn energies, Actually associated with the devil card. Fun little fact there. With James's chart, he has Mercury conjunct Neptune, which Mercury conjunct Neptune could be, individuals can be very, very inspired. They can get all sorts of sense of downloads, creative ideas, things of the nature, but they also can be sort of out of it mentally. They can have escapist tactics to avoid their own emotions or to avoid their own thoughts, especially with so much in Capricorn. There's, there's such an intensity to his chart and I just wonder if his drinking and like having fun was a way to like lash out from all of the pressure he puts on himself and it feels like his outer environment put on himself with all of that Capricorn. But the nice thing about Capricorn is that they, as they get older, they sort of age backwards in a way. Like they typically have to get serious about their life pretty young in life, but they're able to tap into sort of just youthfulness and fun a little bit later within their world. And as a North Node Capricorn, you know, that's what he's here to do. He's here to get serious. He's here to be an upstanding citizen of, of society. He's here to sort of refather himself in some ways, to be sort of an authority in some fashions and to create structure within his world. His Mars is exalted. It's conjoining his North Node. So also here to sort of like advocate for himself, find his power source and he has Venus and Sagittarius. So he is looking for, you know, fun, lighthearted experiences, particularly when it comes to the feminine. And as a Libra moon, you know, having a partner is very, very important to him. That's something that really soothes him to a deeper level and also explains some of his charm. Lala is a Virgo sun, but a Venus Leo. That's why you always gotta look because 
Virgos will show up differently than one another, especially if you know one has Leo placements because Virgo, y'all read about it and it won't really feel like it fits Lala. It's like very humbled, hardworking, hard on themselves, which we don't really get with her. I think we really feel her Venus and Leo, which wants to express herself, be her own person, you know, step out in fly us of fits, things of the nature, as well as Venus and Leo can be subject to a decent amount of bragging. They do need a lot of attention within their relationships. They want to be lifted up like royalty in some ways. She's an Aquarius moon. So Aquarius moons are this interesting balance of detached, but also of the people. So with Aquarius moons, they can sometimes feel very, very removed even if you're like talking to them and you have like a relationship with them, they can feel like they're light years away, but they also really do feel strongly about humanitarian causes. When it comes to their own emotions, they can logicize it right away. With Aquarius Moon and Venus and Leo, this is someone who really needs to do their own thing, walk to the beat of their own drum, have their own style, so on and so forth. And with Mars and Gemini, like Mars is our weapon, how we get our way with Mars and Gemini, this is getting one's way through the words. Forgive the uneven audio, there were just a couple of other things that I caught in her chart that I wanted to note. One being her Mercury is exalted, which means her Mercury is in its favorite position to be in. So with the Mercury in Virgo, Mars in Gemini, this is someone whose words are their weapon of choice. Very quick, very witty, but if you notice, her Mercury is retrograde. So there is a journey of having to come inward in order to refine one's message or to learn how to speak more concisely. I mean, some Mercury retrograde individuals are very shy when they're younger and they have to learn how to speak up, speak their truth. Some have issues around oversharing, over talking. They have to learn to refine, sort of hold back. But either way, there's this internal journey around language that a Mercury retrograde native has to go on. As well as with North Node conjunct Moon, she's learning how to nurture herself and her own emotions, as well as to be a mom. It's not necessarily what comes easiest or natural, most natural. North Node is our assignment in this lifetime, but it is truly what her soul wanted to do here. Raquel is a Virgo sun with Chiron right on her sun, which is interesting. So Chiron is the wounded healer. So when we have Chiron sun, they can feel a little on the outside. They can feel like they're an easy target. They can feel a little bit more sensitive than other people, which we've seen in Raquel's case. And within Virgo, Virgos are very hard on themselves. So she can feel like her flaws are very clear for other people to see at times, but it also can give a decent amount of empathy, which we can see in her you know, dreams and her desires for the future. Her Mercury is in Libra, which can give a really beautiful speaking voice and why she sort of has that, that baby voice. And she's a Mars in Cancer. So again, same with Ariana, there is this feeling of feeling weaker than other people. And with hers too, with Sun conjunct Chiron, you know, there is this feeling that she's an easy target or that she's too soft to make it in this world or too sweet to make it in this world. And, and they can sort of just like come into themselves and be scared to find conflict, which we've seen in her case at times because her Mars is in a position it doesn't necessarily like to be in. She has her Venus in Scorpio, which goes very, very deep with love. They do not go surface level, which is also like why she was so devoted to James and like, you know, I want to see you change. With Venus Scorpio, they believe that love can change and evolve. They believe that, that you know, power can happen when two people truly merge together. So her Venus in Scorpio is what kept her, you know, seeing it through. And with Venus conjunct Jupiter, you know, there's an expansion of beauty. There's an expansion of money, especially when it come to, comes to merge projects, things of the nature. And she's Sagittarius moon, which is nice as James is Sagittarius as well. So Sagittarius energy just allows the couple to feel more free within their union and to both prioritize that. A few additional notes I wanted to make on Raquel's chart. One being, would you look at that beautiful grand water trine linking her Venus and Jupiter in North Node and Scorpio, Mars in Cancer, Saturn in Pisces, this really free flowing of watery energy. And since her North Node is included and her Jupiter and her Venus, both of the benefics, I mean, she's here to live a very blessed life because of her kindness, her empathy, and her sensitivity, her emotions. Of course, as a heavy water individual, look at the category with all of that water signs. Like, it's not the easiest path. It is a lot of sensitivity, but with North Node there, she's blessed when she leads with empathy and compassion for other humans, as well as with North Node going into Scorpio, she's here to sort of surrender into trust and risk and being able to merge within partnerships and not just live off of her own efforts, which is the South Node Taurus energy and leaning more into the unknown. 
And my final is Charlie, but it should be known that this was the one where I could not find a birth year. So I creeped, I went on LinkedIn, but that is just a guess. But here is what I came up with. If the birthday is be believed, she's an Aquarius sun with a Sagittarius moon, which is why she, you know she's so honest and direct, like a Sagittarius placement, you know, is gonna tell you how they feel. They really value their own truth very deeply. And with Aquarius, Aquarius is energy, interesting because it's like we can resonate with them a lot because they can resonate with a lot of people they are the sign of the collective but they also feel a little detached from it and i feel like she's sort of had this cool cool girl you know veneer or exterior where a lot of people in, in prior season was like oh my gosh i love her they like saw parts of themselves within her and if, if birthday is to be believed she has venus conjunct jupiter which bodes very well for her esthetician career as venus is beauty it's also women it's also money so with venus jupiter this is someone who tends to be abundant um, when it comes to monetary pursuits as well as abundant when it comes to beauty she and raquel both have this i mean everyone's beautiful um but their chart is saying look how beautiful they are and also venus is luxury things of the nature so with venus conjunct jupiter they can find a lot of success in venusian like industries which esthetician and facials would absolutely be and she has mercury neptune which yes they can be a little out there they can be a little all over the place their ideas can seem strange like oh i've never had pasta or whatever else um but venus and neptune individuals can be very very inspired very very intuitive friends that is all i have for the season nine cast members please let me know below who else you would like to see me do within this challenge this was actually so much fun i just love being able to dive into these figures that we see on our television screens to understand them a little bit more as well as have these astrological skills in our own back pocket so that when we delineate charts we can you know learn a thing or two friends my instagram handle is at hilly common astrology my tiktok is the same i would love to invite you to join me over there and until we meet again drink lots of water and stay cosmic